This video is sponsored by Squarespace. For 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain, go to squarespace.com slash mattday. Earlier this month, Molly and I took our youngest son, Forrest, to Hocking Hill State Park, and I brought along the M11 monochrome. This is the one camera I'm using these days, and since I've been using this for a few months now, I've gotten questions on what it's like to edit these files in Lightroom. So today I just grabbed a handful of pictures that I made that day. I'm going to walk through basically start to finish where they go from straight out of camera to the finished result. Depending on the light, some photos, they really aren't too far off from the start. This one right here looks pretty good right out of the gate. However, I think I would want to bring the highlights down just a little bit. You can see in his white shirt, the uh, highlights are starting to clip there. I'm going to bring that down to, say, negative 50, and then I'm actually going to bring the exposure up just to kind of get the overall exposure a little bit brighter. Bring that up to about there about half a stop or so, and I'm gonna actually increase the contrast just a little bit, just to give it a little bit more of a punch, and still getting good detail in the shadows. Bring it up to about plus 30, and I'm gonna bring the shadows up just a tiny bit. Right there, quick before and after, it really just gives the contrast a little bit more punch, and uh, doesn't take too much to get from you know the starting point to the finished result on this one but you'll see in some of the photos they do require a little bit more work this is a photo of the devil's bathtub that's what they call it in hawking hills and you can see in the background here where the water off in the distance was directly in sunlight if i hit the j key uh, you can clearly see that that white area is clipping I bring the highlights down all the way, you can see that no matter how much I bring it down, that information is just completely lost. So really what I wanna do is bring it down just enough to where you can kind of see the clear edge of the frame there. Uh, I don't like to have any highlights at the edge of the frame where it's just pure white, so you're unable to see that actual you know, defined edge. I like to make sure I keep that kind of stuff intact. So bring the highlights down, negative 20, not too much, uh, just enough to be able to see the edge there. And I'm gonna bring the shadows up as well. However, I am going to increase the contrast. So we'll go up plus 70 there and keep the J key on so I can see if things start to clip again. Bring the contrast up to about plus 40. Just give it a little bit more of a punch and uh, bring the blacks down just a little bit. I'm starting to clip right in here in some of these really dark areas, but for a shot like this, I like having a good amount of contrast and uh, if any of these blacks you know, or dark areas start to lose detail, not too concerned about that. Really, I wanted to focus on just the form and shape of the devil's bathtub here. Quick little before and after, you can see it's really overall just enhancing the contrast, nothing too drastic. This snake photo right here, I shot this with the 90 millimeter that I was borrowing from KEH. I recently did a video on cropping as opposed to changing lenses. If you haven't seen that one, check it out. Uh, made for some good conversation. Uh, this snake, I completely didn't even notice. I would have walked right past it, but Molly spotted it, so thank you, Molly. Overall, it's pretty flat and pretty dark as well. I'm going to want to lift the exposure up, so I'm going to start with that. And right about there is where I'd like it. However, the highlights, it looks a little bright uh, in terms of the highlights. I want to kind of add the contrast back in, but I don't want to lose the detail there. So I'm going to pull the highlights down first, and uh, let's start increasing the contrast to really define the shape and everything. Go, go a little heavy, go plus 50 on the contrast, and I'm going to grab, let's start with the shadows and see what that's like. If I lift the shadows up quite a bit, you can see, uh, you know, there's tons of detail and information down here, but I don't want it to be super flat. I want to have some good contrast in this one. It was in direct sunlight, so it's understandable to have a good amount of contrast there. Lift the shadows up just a little bit, and we might actually pull that exposure back down just a tiny bit. I would say right there, if we grab the black slider, you can see there's a lot more information down here as well, but again, don't wanna make it just super flat. So let's bring that down plus 30. Quick before and after. I think that looks about where I would leave it. This is probably one of my favorite photos of the day. I love the stone bridge in the background here, as well as this tree with all of the exposed roots here. And 
overall it's sort of in relatively flat light um, there was sunlight coming from the back there kind of hitting this little middle point where there was sort of a, a gap in the trees however uh, it was sort of soft light so it's it's a pretty flat photo overall as well as a dark photo overall again my main focus was not losing any detail where the light was hitting on uh, any of this foliage here so Let's start with, uh, I'll hit the J key. I can see where things are clipping. I'm gonna grab the exposure slider and just start lifting that up. And right about there. I wouldn't necessarily go a full stop, maybe plus 80. That's starting to look better. Uh, let me grab the highlights and just bring those down just a tiny bit. And uh, again, some of the areas where it might clip, I'm not necessarily worried about that. What I might do is lift the shadows and then just kind of crunch with the black slider down just a little bit. If I lose detail in, you know, the dirt and uh, in these severely shaded areas, not too concerned about that. I like to have a little bit of a punch to the contrast, just a quick before and after. I think that feels right. I kind of like where that is right there. I liked the soft light in the scene originally, so I don't want to completely, you know, lose that. I want to keep some of that soft look. So I don't want as much contrast in this one, but maybe bring the exposure down just a little bit and bring the black slider back up. That right there, it's subtle, but especially in a print, Stuff like this, I want to try and keep some of that information there, so I'm pretty happy with that. We'll leave that one there. Now this photo is an example of heavily underexposing in order to keep as much highlight information as I can. There was just a little cut of light going down these stairs here, and you can see down here at the bottom hitting the J key, um, that spot right there. I still lost information, I think, just a little tiny bit right there because it was in direct hard sunlight and everything else was heavily in the shade. So we're gonna see what it takes to uh, bring this information out here. Just starting with the shadows themselves, if I grab the shadow slider and start lifting it up, uh, you can start to see a lot of that come through. We'll, uh, well, just for fun, we'll leave the shadows at 100. Let's grab the highlights, bring those down a little bit, and I'm gonna start taking the exposure way up. And now you can see this photo really start to come to life. Um, you know, heavily underexposed again, but in order to keep as much highlight information as I can, that was the goal. Now this is a little too flat for my liking, especially for this kind of lighting scenario, so I'm gonna grab the shadows and bring those back down to about right there. That to me overall looks good. We've got some nice highlights here, good information in the shadows, but with that really, you know, stark contrast between the shaded areas and where the light was hitting, still gives you a good amount of uh, range there. And if you just do the quick before and after, you can see how well this thing holds shadow information when it's that underexposed from the start. But now the most important part of this whole process is printing. So let's make some prints and get these pictures into the real world. I like to use the Lightroom print module for this. Uh, I'm going to be printing on my Canon Pro 1000. And I've got Ilford Gallery Gold Fiber Pearl Paper. This is probably my favorite paper at the moment. I've been using it a lot over the last year or so. Got 8.5 by 11 right here. And in the Lightroom module, I'm able to uh, you know, control the size, control the margins, and using the ICC profiles for the paper, that's letting my computer know exactly what kind of paper I'm putting in the printer. Make sure you do that if you're printing at home, that way you're gonna get the best results every time. Your printer is gonna know how to handle that specific paper. So typically for the print adjustment, I like to bring the brightness up about plus 10. Uh, it's subtle, but it's enough to make a difference, especially in the shadow areas. Final print is gonna be close to nine and a half by six and a half ish, you know, somewhere around there. Uh, I don't wanna crop the photo in order to fill the frame or to get equal margins. I wanna have the photo, you know, cropped exactly how it was shot um, with the right aspect ratio and everything. And again, this is on eight and a half by 11 paper. So let's make some prints and uh, we'll see how these look.
just like printing in the darkroom, it's always good to make a test print of each image before you make a number of copies. The print itself is going to be on paper, and so it's going to be viewed much differently than it would just viewing the photo on a computer screen. So even if you're using the correct ICC profiles, sometimes you might want to make slight adjustments in order to get the final look just where you want it. If you'd like to support my work and the channel and everything I'm doing here and you want to purchase any of these prints that I've made today, I'm going to throw some of these up over on my website, that's mattdayphoto.com, and that was made with today's sponsor, Squarespace. When I created mattdayphoto.com, I did it with Squarespace. It was a no-brainer seeing as they had everything I needed in one place, and almost 10 years later, they're still continuing to build and add new features to their service, all while keeping it extremely easy to use. Whether you're experienced with this sort of thing, or if you're just now starting out, there's tons of templates to choose from with drag and drop customization, along with 24-7 award-winning customer service that are always there when you need them. You can share your work using Squarespace's professional portfolio designs or even create customizable galleries with password protected pages if you'd like to share your work privately with your clients. Since I launched mattdayphoto.com, I've sold my own zines, photo books, prints, and merch all through my own website. Whether you're selling physical or digital products, Squarespace has all of the tools you need to start selling online. You can also schedule appointments on your Squarespace website. You can offer online or in-person private sessions, workshops, and group classes. If you have your own community you'd like to further connect with, you can also use the Member Areas feature, where you can monetize your content by selling membership access to exclusive sections of your website. It's never been easier to build your own website, and you can start a free trial at squarespace.com and check it out for yourself. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash mattday. That'll save you 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's going to do it for this video. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope it gave you a better idea as to how the M11 monochrome files are in post and just the flexibility that they have. If you have any other questions that weren't answered in this video, let me know in the comments down below and we'll keep the conversation going. But that's it for today. So thank you all for watching. I love you guys. I'll see you next time.